Hello and welcome to Cadex TV. I'm Tom Bailey in London. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 11.30 Eastern Time and 12.30 in Bermuda. Today in history, today in 1853, Vincent van Gogh was born in Zundart in the Netherlands. He's the famous artist. And also, today in 1987, Vincent van Gogh's sunflowers sold for a record $39.7 million. And now to the news. According to Lloyd's director and general counsel, Sean McGovern, the PSYOP Solvency II regulations are penal. Speaking at the European Insurance Forum in Dublin, he said these guidelines would mean that Lloyd's would have to double its existing capital requirement. He said there should be more focus on the requirements of Pillar 2 rather than the quantitative approach of the directive. The government also warned that it was dangerous for insurers outside the EU to remain complacent about the requirements of new directive due to be implemented in 2012. Chairman of the Solvency II Working Group, Jan Piazowski, said the implementation date was tough but reasonable. He believed that some flexibility would be likely as nobody will be 100% ready by the time 2012 rolls around. Research suggests that fears that Britain could be plunged into an ice age by a waning Gulf Stream are unfounded. Uh, the current responsible for Britain's mild climate by bringing a constant flow of warm water and weather from the tropics has not significantly changed in nearly 20 years, according to scientists. They believe that the small difference observed in its pace since research began in 1993 part of a natural cycle. The, finding call into, the findings call into question theories posed by some environmentalists that the global warming could shut down the stream, causing temperatures to fall dramatically in Europe. Such a catastrophe was dramatized in the apocalyptic Hollywood film The Day After Tomorrow and is predicted in some cute computer models of climate change. A team of NASA scientists use its satellites to monitor changes in the height of the sea to, to, to follow changes in the flow of the Gulf Stream. They found that between 2002 and 2009, there was no discernible trend, and that its flow change and that its sorry, there was no discernible trend, and that its flow changed vastly over the seasons. Satellite records dating back to 1993 did suggest a minor increase in flow overall, although researchers believe it is too small to be significant. Dr. Josh Willis from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the JPL in California, said. The changes we're seeing in overturning, in, in overturning strength are probably part of a natural cycle. The slight increase in overturning since 1993 coincides with a decades-long natural pattern of Atlantic heating and cooling. The Gulf Stream is critical in maintaining the mild climate in Britain and Europe. Without the flow of warm water from the Mid-Atlantic, the British Isles would be between 4 and 6 degrees colder than they currently are. It forms part of a larger movement of water known as the Atlantic Merid Meridional Overturning Circulation and is driven by surface winds and differences in the density of water. All this new research has been published and is available in the Journal of Geophysics Research Letters. Um, not typically a tropical storm season at this time of year, but um, as you'll see from the map, we've got a weather system at the north of Australia. It's uh, currently it's, it's called Tropical Storm Pool and uh, it's currently got sustained winds of 40 knots. Uh, it is projected to weaken to a tropical depression in the next 24 hours with winds weakening to 30 knots um, and it's projected to make landfall uh, along that coastline to the east of Darwin. Um, <coughs> we'll keep you posted if anything changes with that tropical storm pattern. Right, um, reinsurers, according to Bloomberg, are issuing corporate bonds at the fastest pace in almost five years as they authorize stock buybacks, taking on $1.34 billion in extra debt with borrowing costs at their lowest since 2004. Endurance Specialty Holdings Limited became the latest Bermuda-based reinsurer to issue bonds when it sold $85 million of notes this week. Access Capital Holdings and Partner Re Limited each placed $500 million of notes, and Renaissance Re Holdings sold $250 million on the 12th of March. It is the first time since 2005 that four reinsurers sold debt in a two week span, according to data compiled by, by Bloomberg. Reinsurers which sell 
backup protection to insurance companies issuing some of the debt to fund share repurchases as the majority of their stocks trade below book value, a measure of assets, less liabilities. Borrowing costs for investment grade companies have fallen to the lowest since April 2004, according to Bank of America Merrill Lynch's U.S. Corporate Master Index. Um, Paul Newsom, analyst at Sandler O'Neill and Partners LP, said if you're a company who can raise debt at 5 or 6% and your stock is trading below book value, there's an arbitrage there. The market is essentially saying, we want you to put on debt and we want you to get rid of your equity. Partners Re Board of Directors authorized the repurchase of as many as 8 million shares last month, or about 10% of the outstanding stock. The company closed at $80.20 on Friday. Um, that is running at 93% of the company's book value per share. Um, and still with the corporate bonds, Swiss reinsurance company said on uh, Monday that it has completed a $120 million catastrophe bond placement to cover its portion of catastrophe losses from North Atlantic hurricanes, European windstorms, and California and Japan earthquakes. The bond successor 10 Limited, or successor X Limited, Series 2010-1 is the second transaction to be issued through Swiss Re's successor X program, a Cayman Islands-based special purpose vehicle. The transaction covers a three-year period ending in March 2013. <coughs> Excuse me. Cooper Gay staff will not get any bonuses in 2010. Uh, the reinsurance magazine has learned that the UK broker will not, not issue its staffs with bonus payments this year. Staff at UK headquartered reinsurance broker were told the news earlier this month. Earlier this month, Cooper Gay also admitted it was reducing staff numbers. A small number of brokers have lost their job. Uh, in redundancies, Cooper Gay declined to comment, but it has been widely reported in the press that Cooper Gay is preparing for a flotation on either the London Stock Exchange or a European bourse, and this is perhaps um, some cost-cutting to improve the uh, bottom line figures ahead of that. The insurance partnership has recruited former Oxygen employees Liam O'Rourke, Kevin Trotter, Damien Pottage and Alastair Brambuck. The senior brokers will join Hull-based TIP and will drive the launch of its Leeds office due to open in May. The business has been linked with a number of other former Oxygen staff. TIP Group Managing Director Rob Worrell described the appointments as a great result for the broker and said they were indicative of the company's strategic direction. Mr. Worrell said the new team will really be an asset to TIP and all our clients, so we're absolutely delighted they've decided to work with us. And finally, dubbed the world's largest scientific experiment, the giant atom smasher known as the Large Hadron Collider in CERN, Switzerland, holds the promise of revealing details about theoretical par particles and microforces. However, initial attempts yesterday were unsuccessful because of problems developed with the beams, according to scientists working on the massive machine. That meant the protons had to be dumped from the collider and new beams had to be injected. According to Michael Barnett of Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, it's a very complicated machine and we have ups and downs. Right now we have a down. Two beams of protons began 10 days ago to speed at high energy in opposite directions around the 27 kilometer, that 17 mile tunnel under the Swiss French border at Geneva. The beams were pushed to 3.5 trillion electron volts in recent days, the highest energy achieved by any physics accelerator, some three times higher than any previous record generated. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, is trying to use the powerful superconducting magnets to force the two beams to cross, creating collisions and showers of particles. They could have been successful immediately, but such huge machines can be so tricky to run that it could take days. When collisions become routine, the beams will be packed with hundreds of billions of protons, but these particles are so tiny that few will collide at each crossing. Steve Myers, CERN's director